There is very strong lighting on the faces generally. There is a very strong contrast. The strong contrast like that is really made with the sun. You're not getting a strong contrast on my face in here because the sun actually isn't beaming in. Sun on the face was the big clue. It is even more obvious in Northern Europe, Bruges and Ghent, individuals true to life and again brightly lit. Look at the deep shadows, small irises. They were sitting in very strong light, the sun. These paintings are all quite small, roughly the same size, about 30 centimeters across. It is strange that these artists are still referred to as Flemish primitives. But history places the dawn of the Renaissance in Florence, not here. Bruges and Ghent were very sophisticated new cities. The royal court and the church was almost as rich and powerful as in Florence. Both the church and the court commissioned paintings. Jan van Eyck was the court painter. He was not a humble craftsman. He ran a large workshop with many apprentices. He was an intellectual, a theologian, and a scientist. He is described by Vasari as an alchemist and credited with the invention of oil painting. Primitive? You are totally knocked out when looking at this picture. It's unbelievably rich in detail in every single part of it. The textures of cloth. The canon is holding a book with a kind of chamois leather that wraps the book. Amazing, the little figures behind are made of wood. Your eye can tell that, you can tell everything about the textures of the cloths, the incredible detail in the bishop's staff. Anything that's shiny, they seem to particular love. The armor is polished. All the gold thread in the bishop's coat. The shines look amazing. They look correct, as we'd say. You could almost say at times, they look almost like photographs. You could almost say that. It was that photographic look that I was beginning to see. I began to look at patterned fabrics. This is Masolino. Masaccio's teacher, 1425. He's made no attempt to describe the form under the fabric. The pattern is painted flat. Van Eyck's fabric, done 10 years later, is very different. See how beautifully the pattern follows the form. Absolutely believable on the surface. This is Bronzino, 1545. By now, a bold, elaborate fabric is following all the folds done very elaborately. Now, armor. The problem with shiny surfaces is when your eye moves, the shine moves. Pisanello, in 1450, did not even attempt the shine. 
He drew it by hand, so it has a handmade look. And then something happened. In this 1501 Giorgione, the shine here looks correct. By 1625, Van Dyck's armor with a delicate etched pattern could almost be a photograph. Fabrics and armor are very difficult to draw, but look at this chandelier in Van Eyck's Arnolfini wedding, painted in 1434. I've wondered most of my life how he painted this chandelier. In 1435, Alberti, in his book On Painting, described a method for drawing complex objects, a net, a grid of threads held in front of the subject. It's not that accurate and it is difficult to use, and of course you have to look through a fixed point to see it. How would you do it by eye? By two eyes. Anybody who knows the slightest thing about technical drawing, tracing, architectural drawing, engineering drawing, anything, will know that what I was trying to do on this piece of paper was conceptualize into two dimensions this fantastic, complicated, marvelous chandelier that appeared in a painting in 1430. I know that it is impossible for my two eyes here to make a drawing of that the way it appears in the painting. With a computer, you can turn the chandelier around. The very fact you can do this tells us that it is drawn in perfect perspective from a single point. And yet the methods for drawing something this complicated did not exist for at least another century. So how did artists in 15th century Bruges do it? Well, today they would have used a camera to take a photograph, a slide, project it onto the canvas, and then trace it. There are descriptions a hundred years after Van Eyck of dark rooms with a lens called a camera obscura, which simply means dark room. I kept looking for lenses and people would say, well, where's all the equipment? What do you mean a camera obscura? One of the problems with a camera obscura is it sounds like a piece of equipment. I want to demonstrate that actually the only piece of equipment it is is a piece of glass. 